So we know, the Gemara tells us Masech the Shabbos that the Yom Tev of Shuas, Yom Tev of Shuas has a theme. What is the theme of the Yom Tev of Shuas? It's a numeric theme. It's a number. The Yom Tev of Shuas is associated with a number. What number is that? It's not 50. It's associated with number 50? Okay. That's the, what it says in the Torah. But the Gemara it says it's associated with the number three. In the words of the Gemara, Vrich Rachmana, blessed is the Eberstar, the Yoy who gave Uriyant Lisoi, he gave a triple Torah, the Abat Lisoi, to a triple nation. The Yarchat Lisoi in the third month, the Yemat Lisoi on the third day, I did Lisoi through the third one. So the, the Torah is a triple Torah. The Torah is comprised of Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim. And the Torah was given to a triple nation, a nation that consists of Kehanim, Levim, and Yisraelim. And it was given in the third month, which is the month of Sivan. On the third day, as the Pasuk says, Hashem says, Hayu Nechoinim, Layim Ashlishi, be prepared on the third day, Kibayim Ashlishi, Yered Hashem, because on the third day Hashem is coming down on our Sinai. So it was given on the third day. And it was given through the third one, Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the third in his family, Miriam, Aaron, and Moshe. Okay, that's cute. And this year, by the way, we have three days of Yom Tov. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> what is the significance of the fact that the Yom Tov of Shu is associated with the number three? Obviously, if the Gemara, the Gemara is saying this, it's not just uh, telling us something which is cute. But obviously, there's, uh, I mean, there's obviously some sort of substantial correlation and connection between the Yom Tov of Shuas and Kabbalah Satera with the number three. And what is that? So this is something which is talked about in Chassidus extensively, in the Rebbe's Torah specifically. What do the numbers one, two, and three represent? The number one, it's not very difficult. Number one represents Echad mi who knows one? One is Hashem. Echad yochud mi What is two? Okay, <laughs> that's that's in, in, in that song. But in, the, in larger context, what is two? The number two represents everything else, other than Hashem, which didn't exist, you know, before the creation of the world. There was only the one. Hashem Melach, Hashem Melach, right? It was who Shmuel Levad. There was only Hashem, and then suddenly Hashem creates the world, and the world represents an entity which, at least in its own perception, is a yesh. This is what we've been talking about the entire time. And now we have something which is, uh, you know, when Hashem introduces himself to Kali Yisrael, we're going to go back to Hashem to show on two days from now. And we're going to hear Hashem introduce himself. He says, Anoichi Hashem Alikecha. Anoichi begins with an Aleph. I am the one. And when it talks about Bereshis Bara Alikim Mishashamayim Mishaharetz, it talks about Hashem creating the world. That's a base. Because that, the, there's the, the Aleph is of Anoichi. The Beresh is bara, the creation of the world, that is the base. That is the second entity. Take a moment uh, just to remind everyone that the Rebbe, something which the Rebbe requested numerous times, that when it comes to the reading of the Torah, that everyone should be present in the Shul. On the first day of Shavuos, the Sunday, Anashim, Anashim Vitaf, men, women, children, even tiny little children, just, just like by the first time every single Yid was there by Kabbalah Satera, the Rebbe urged and encouraged the same thing as also. So if there's anyone that you know that can be urged or encouraged to go to a shul on the first day of, uh, of Shavuos to hear the Kabbalah Satera, that's something which is uh, very significant. But back to our topic. And by the way, this is something which is also alluded to in, in Bereshis itself, where we have, on the first day we know, we don't have Yem Risha and Yem Sheni, Yem Shlishi. The Arab Ayyubaykar is Yem Sheni, Yem Shlishi, but Yem Echad. And why? What does Chazal say on that? And Yom Echad is because on that day when Hashem was alone. Yom Echad. And then comes along the second day. And suddenly in the second day, there is what's created is Machlekes, is division. Now there's a new Metzies, other than Hashem. And what do we have on the second day of creation? There is no Kitoiv. There is no Kitoiv on the second day of creation. Why? Because the number two is not good. Number two represents Machlekes. What is it? Not only Machlik's team people, number two represents the idea, a departure from division and a departure from the unity 
the unity from Hashem, the unity of Hashem. Yom took one for we'll talk about the, well, right now, when you say Yom Hashlishi, we're getting back to our our number of shuas is three. Remember, we're going to get there, right? Why did Hashem create a two? Why was two created? What was wrong with one? What was wrong with when there was only Hashem? In the words of the Tanya that we're talking about right now, we're learning all about this idea of Yesh What is it? What is Yesh? As long as there's only Ilah there was no, there was only one, there wasn't two. Because everything was just a direct extension from Hashem, which felt itself as a direct extension of Hashem. So no matter how many spheres there are, you have Chetz and Gvurit Ferris, it's all one. Iu v'chayoi, how did we begin the Perik? Iu v'chayoi chad, Iu v'gamoi chad, that Natsilus, it's all echa, it's called the Elam Achtus, it's all oneness. Where does the number two begin? With Yashmi'ai. Yashmi'ai, now we have a Yash. There's something, something other than Hashem. Why did Hashem do that? Malchus is what creates it, but why? Why, why was it necessary? Like What's the plan? And we know that the reason is, is because Hashem wants that we should arrive at number three. Number three is the merging and the unity between. Recording in progress. The merging and the unity between the one and the two, which is, represents the idea of shalom. Shalom, which begins with a shin, and a shin has. Three heads to it, which represents the idea, because peace is the idea of three. What is peace? Peace is you take one and two, and you bring them together to create a third entity, which is a combination of the two, and that is what Shalom is all about. Hashem wanted that there should be the gilu of Hashem, the gilu of Hashem's glory, in the place of Yash, in the place of what's called the Ilam Hapirut. And what the Zayar talks about, the Turi de Pruda, this world which is a place which is separate from Hashem, Hashem wants that he should be revealed there. He wants Adira B'Tachtoinim. He wants to be, what is a Tachtoinim? In a place where he is not felt and a place that comes and streams and says, Amayesh, Yesh, that's where Hashem wants to be. Where did you say the Shin comes from? Where, uh, what's the uh, Asik or the word that, uh, that the Shin was uh, from? Shalom. The word Shalom begins. I know Shalom, but, but in terms of one, two, three, what, what the Shin is. No, I didn't, say, I didn't say a Pasuk. All I'm saying is that this is represented. The word shalom. I didn't. I didn't mention any possible. Shalom means right. Okay. And this is what happened on Shavuos, <clears throat> which also begins with Hashem. And the Torah was given on Shabbos, which also begins with Hashem. Right. What happened on Shavuos? Which is the big question, the big puzzling question, which we've probably talked about in previous years. What is the significance of the event of Shavuos? The Torah we had beforehand. You know that the Avis kept the entire Torah before it was given. Which, by the way, think about the oxymoron of that. How did they give it before it was given? Obviously, they had it. Obviously, they learned it. Who gave it to you? That, that's a good question. And we'll, <laughs> which, um, if there's no Martin Torah, how do you some later on. Simen, in, uh, in Simen Chav. Did you get a card? In Simen Chav. In Simen Chav. So what's the point of the Martin Torah? In Simen Chavav and Eger Sakir, this Alter Rebbe will talk about how they how they knew the all the Torah. So a good question. But the point is, they had it. We know there was yeshivas. We know that Avram, the Gemara says Avram was Zakh and Yeshiv Yeshiva. Shem ve'Ever. And then Yaakov sends Yehuda to start a yeshiva in Mitzrayim before he comes down. And with the Levim, what were they doing the entire time in Mitzrayim? They weren't working as the learning Torah. And suddenly comes the big day, and what? We're getting the Torah. What are we getting the Torah? We had the Torah. Yeah. So you're going to say, well, not Torah was completed? No, Torah wasn't completed. <coughs> Torah was completed on the, the day that Moshe passed away. And Zion Adar, that's when he finished uh, writing the Torah. So what happened? Now, we know it was a spectacular event. We know it was amazing, something which never happened before and never will happen again until Moshiach comes, that Hashem should reveal himself to the nation and speak to us directly. We know it was a spectacular event. But the question is, what happened? Or to put it in different words, <coughs> what was different about the day after Shavuos and the day before Shavuos? What changed? So in Chassidus is explained that what changed is, and there's a medrash that, uh, that expresses it and says that there was, uh, there was two warring nations back in the, in the time, it was uh, Rome and Syria. And uh, people, the Romans weren't able to uh, go to Syria, the, Syria the, the, the Romans weren't able to go up to Syria, the Syrians weren't able to go down to Rome. And then one day, that Gezerah was, uh, was in this battle, was abolished. 
And now the people are able to go from one place to another. I'd say the modern day analogy of that is, I think everyone here is old enough to remember, the Berlin Wall. So you had a city which was divided by a wall, and you had for decades, you had families divided, and they, they could have lived four blocks away from each other, but... Uh, and then one day, the Berlin Wall came crashing down, and suddenly that gazeta was bottled, and people were able to go. So the, the Medr says the same thing as when Hashem gave the world, He made a gazeta. Hashemayim, Shemayim, Hashem. The heaven is for spirituality and holiness and godliness. The, the world was dominated by people and physicality. And there was this gzera. The physical was not able to become holy. And this became, this gzera became Batla and Matan Torah. But Matan Torah was when this decree was abolished. And that's why the Pasuk says, Vayered Hashem al Har Sinai. So that's part one, Hashem coming down here. And then the next thing is, Val Moshe Amar. Excuse me, well, Moshe Omar, Aleyel Hashem, Hashem invites Moshe to come up. The other words, the Mechitza was, uh, the barrier was broken. And what this means in our life is, is that, for example, now we can do a mitzvah with an object and the mitzvah becomes holy. That didn't, that didn't happen before him. For Man Teira, there was no such thing as a Chayfet Shal Kedusha. Which why Avram Avinu, when he wanted to uh, make Eliezer swear, he needed to have something which was holy. He didn't pull out a Sefer Torah. Instead, what did he do? That's not Yerechi. He said, Simla Yad Chatach Yerechi. He told Olazer to put his hand on his Brismillah. Why? Because the only thing that was holy was a Brismillah. Why? Because a Brismillah was the one thing, even though it was before Man Torah, which was similar to after Man Torah, because it was a mitzvah from Hashem. So the only thing that had Kedusha in it was not a Mezuzah, not a Sefer Torah, not a Tfilin, not a Tzitzis. Although Avram did all those things. No, but it didn't have Kedusha. Why? Because of that Gezeira. That Gezeira, that Gezeira, which did not allow, which means, in simple words, that up until the time of Matan Torah, what you had was the one and the two. You had one, which is Hashem. You had two in the world. And there was no Shalom between the two. There was no peace between the two. With Matan Torah, that Gezeira became this battle. And suddenly now, we can have something here in this world, a Sefer Torah, which is holy. That's not only a safer tailor. <coughs> Whatever you do, you wear you can bring kedusha into every single object, whether it's the food that you eat, the clothing that you wear, the house, the, the house that you live in, the table where you sit and you learn tailor, everything, we're able to bring kedusha into this world, into the objects of this world. And that is the Tahla Sakavana. And that's what happened on Mount Torah. And that is the Tahla Sakavana. That was the whole point of creation. Now, the reason why Hashem created the world was because that was what he desired. Hashem desired that there should be a yesh. This is what we're learning about in Tanya. This is, uh, this is the ultimate greatness of Malchus. Is that Malchus creates yesh mi'ayin. Creates something which in its own estimation is a, is a number two. Even though in reality it's a number two. And in reality, taka everything is Hashem. But in its own perception, it considers itself to be a davar nifrat from Hashem. Something which is nifrat. Why? Because ain't malach balayam. The purpose is that we should take the world, which seems to be a nifrat from the Eibishtar, and connected to Hashem, and that is the koyach that was given to us through Ma'an Torah. And that is the ultimate koyach, the koyach to fulfill Hashem's ultimate kavana in making a dira b'tachtoyim. And this represents itself in many different aspects of shuas, because there's the theme of shuas. And um, there are many different uh, talks of the Rebbe. The Rebbe explains how different uh, aspects of shuas are connected to this. And one of them is, we know that... Uh, it says, the Gemara says, the that Kuli Nami Lachem. That when it comes to other Yom Tevim, there's a Machlekes. Machlekes, General Lazar, Neb Yeshua. Do we, uh, what if I, I don't want to enjoy myself on Yom Tev? I want to devote my entire Yom Tev only to Hashem. So that's, that was, that's one opinion. That's one opinion. That's Reb Yeshua's opinion. Reb Lazar said, no. Reb Lazar says, Either Kulei Lacham or Kulei Lacham, or what it says. So you see, no, 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 halfway. It's no halfways. Either, either devote Yom to the Hashem or go, or go eat your chum, right? Don't, uh, don't mix the two. What example? Rebbe was a very, uh, very strict personality, very strict person, Rebbe Lazar. It reflects itself in his teachings in many ways. Rebbe was a student of Shammai. And he had that gvura with him, that integrity. The integrity of Shammai. Integrity and kindness very often are at odds with each other, you realize. Kindness is, is forgiving, whereas integrity is 
But don't, it's it's what do you mean, half to Hashem and half to you? Also, pick or choose, right? However, the Gemara tells us when it, that's when it comes to every yamta, when it comes to uh, Shavuos, Shavuos, everyone is made at the beginning of Nami Lachem, and Shavuos, you need to enjoy yourself. You need to eat cheesecake on Shavuos. On Shavuos, there's a, don't, 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 don't prava, they say, a prava is kafia, don't, don't, don't be holy as Shavuos, your body has to enjoy yourself. And, this, and even though that we don't pass in the Kabbalah Zer, we pass in the Kabbalah that every yamta, fact we have to enjoy ourselves, but there's still a halachic application for this, which is is a concept of something which is not really done these days, but it's called tainus cholam. If someone has a bad dream, so you can do a fast to um, you can fast to um, t- remove the, any ill effects of the of the dream. And the halacha is that a tainus cholam you allowed to do even on Shabbos or Yom Tif. So if a person that, a person that had a bad dream on Friday night, technically there'd be a lot of fast on Shabbos. Please don't do so without consulting with the rav, and the rav hopefully will tell you no. But uh, I'm talking more in, in theory. Shavuos is an exception to the rule. Shavuos, you can't fast the Tainas Cholom. On Pesach, you can fast the, fa- the Tainas Cholom. On Sukkot, on Sumchas Torah. Not on Shavuos. Why? Because Kul Yom Amadi, everyone admits on Shavuos. Because if you're going to sit on Shavuos, and you're going to daven and learn, and not partake of the physical world, and make the physical world holy, you're missing the whole point of Shavuos. The whole point of Shavuos is the number three. Not number one, not uh, separating ourselves and removing ourselves from this world and uh, entering the world, is bringing Kedusha into the world. And that's Dafka through Taka acting in a physical way and, and taking pleasure but doing it in a holy way and being Machin's Kedusha and bringing Kedusha into the world. <laughs>